So if you have the money and you're brave enough to go out and get an NVIDIA RTX 5090 video card, and I say that, well, because first of all, they are terribly expensive. And you see this price here starting at $1999. No, no, you're not going to find one for that. $2,000 US? Are you kidding me? Nah, not a chance. More like maybe three or $4,000 US. And guess how much that is for us Canadians? Well, it's not quite double, but it's pretty darn close on it. And of course, not to mention all the issues that you could potentially have with a high-end, super fast, super power hungry GPU. And really, this is what this video is about. Power. How much power do you need? What size of a power supply is recommended to power this powerful 5090? Now, considering this video card, at least the power spikes, go to 700 watts. That's right, 700 watts. That's like half the power of your toaster or a toaster oven or a kettle. It requires a lot of power. And this is just the video card. And all joking aside, the connector and the way that the pins are, the cable itself, this could in fact turn into a toaster. Many, many reports of connectors and cables actually smoldering and melting. That is a bad thing. I mean, when you're pumping this much power to a GPU, you need to have consistent decent connectors that can, well, keep up, that will actually work and won't be a problem. And I think what's going to happen is you might be able to pick up one of these and get it to work for now. But over time, maybe in another few weeks or a few months, make sure you monitor the connector and make sure everything's right. But I'm seeing reports now after three, four months of owning this card, people are reporting that they're seeing slowly but surely melting happening and degradation happening to the cable and to the connector. If you are enjoying my content, you can do everything that's up here. You know, just throw me a thanks. Like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and of course, comment. Now, of course, it's not going to be drawing 700 watts all the time unless you are pushing a GPU intensive game or a GPU intensive application. You know, most of us are not doing that all the time, 24 seven, unless you're mining or something. And then you're going to, boy, you're going to need some fans certainly on that card and the connector and the cables and everything else. But yeah, there's so much power required to juice this card. So how much? What size of a power supply is required? So you're going to need a 1200 to a 1500 watt power supply. It depends on what other stuff you have in your computer system. And it is very crucial to have one that is ATX 3.1 certified. Very important. The new 12 volt 2 times 6 connector to prevent melting and damage is also important. Direct 16 pin cables are preferred over adapters because, well, adapters could cause some resistance. Direct connection is the best. But again, these 16 pin connectors, they're trying to do something that I don't think they were ever intended to do. There's too much voltage going through some of the pins and it is causing a lot of instability and reduced lifespan probably over time and potential component damage. Make sure, make sure again that it's connected properly to the GPU. Make sure all your connections are snapped together properly because if you don't do that you'll get arcing and all kinds of problems but yeah if you get one of these first of all you have the money to get one of these so maybe purchasing a 1200 or 1500 watt power supply isn't a big deal for you but just make sure that everything is within spec and i mean you can reach out to communities to find out if what you're thinking about purchasing actually works and of course another very important point to make here is especially in this high-end category 
make sure you don't have any bottlenecks. Have, well, you've got this super fast video card, a great motherboard as well, great memory, a great drive. Make sure it's all on par. If you have any suggestions or comments or thoughts on this, let us know.